Hello, everyone. My name is Ahmad Dinesh. I'm the Associate VP of Product Management at Astera Labs. Uh, always excited to talk about CXL. I remember, uh, you know, what was it five, six years ago, talking about Open Capi, talking about Gen Z and how that was going to turn into the serialization of memory. And of course, those had a little bit of traction, and CXL has really just been taken off now, right? We see the entire industry rallying behind CXL. And what I'm really excited to really talk about here are a few things. One is CXL is no longer this promise, right? We're delivering the actual hardware today, delivering actual silicon on real platforms. And 2023, as Charles was saying, is the year. This is the year where things are starting to launch, right? We're going to see, start to see that ramp. Second is to take a look at CXL as a toolbox, right? Charles walked through a lot of different use cases using memory expansion, memory pooling, memory sharing. With the right set of hardware, you can actually deploy a solution and then just have software control to be able to address all those various use cases. And in a lot of cases, there's actually overlap of those use cases. You can do pooling and memory expansion at the same time if you write, create the right hardware to do so. Uh, last is that as we start to ramp into CXL, what's very important is the interoperability of all the components. We see Intel, AMD announcing their CPUs. There's going to be a lot of memory on the back end. There's new memory controls. It shifts the paradigms and responsibilities of who's required to do this interoperability and testing. So I want to share with you some of the really good work that we're doing at Astera Labs to really ramp the ecosystem into production. So a little bit of an introduction about our Leo memory connectivity platform uh, that supports CXL 1.1 and 2.0. So we're really we're future proof so that we can launch with the first generation of CXL CPUs that are coming out and then be able to quickly transition into the next generation. Fundamentally at its core, Leo is a type three memory controller. So when uh, Charles was walking through the different types, this is a memory expansion device. Now as being a memory expansion device, what are important is the amount of bandwidth that you can deliver, at what certain latency that you can deliver it, and how much capacity can you put behind it. And you can do different combinations of that depending on what you need, how much capacity you can, you can deploy. And so really taking a look at that toolbox approach of being able to do so. So with Leo, we can expand up to two terabytes of memory per device. And we'll walk through some system level views of this later. But in some cases, you can deploy 32 terabyte more memory on a single server now using, using Leo and CXL devices. On the back end, you know, Charles was talking about different tiers of memory, right? Depends on what type of memory you want to connect behind it. You want to connect high performance DDR5, you can essentially be a hot tier of memory. Software today understands a remote hop of latency. So if you can meet that performance, which we're doing with Leo, you can essentially have software agnostic solutions that can provide memory expansion and start taking advantage of CXL today without any software changes at all. And of course, to really be able to deploy these solutions, you have to have low latency, you have to have the reliability, availability, of serviceability features, and of course, the security to deploy this with confidence. And for good measure, there's a lot of customer-specific customization that we've done in there as well to really be able to help bring some differentiation for those platforms. Uh, so Leo comes in two flavors. There is a Leo E-series, which is focused on memory expansion. And then there's our P-series, which then adds support for memory pooling and memory sharing capabilities as well. And I know uh, we have one of our cards that's going out uh, around the um, room right now. That card that you're seeing is our Aurora A-series hardware solution. So we take our silicon and put that into a PCIe standard chem form factor, being able to plug up to four DIMMs behind there. It makes it very easy to deploy. Essentially use the exact same DIMMs that you're using on a server anyways. And now you can plug them in behind a memory controller and really be able to deploy this very easily. Using DIMMs brings you a lot of flexibility as opposed to you know, EDSFF drive form factor because you can have the flexibility of capacity. You can service those devices a lot easier. If the memory goes bad, you just service the memory instead of the whole drive as a, as a whole. So there's a lot of TCO benefits and performance benefits and serviceability benefits of going for a DIMM-based solution instead of a drive form factor. <laughs> it does have a PCIe Express power connector. Correct, yeah. So in some cases, there's some DIMMs that if you want to go up to two terabytes, that far exceed what even a mm -hmm. chem connector can provide. So you have to bring some extra power in. And I'm noticing that you just have a, uh, a heat. You don't have any fans in here. No, yeah. So what, what's, what's the heat distribution on it? 
Yeah, so we have designed the card in such a way that actually provides that proper airflow and actually that shield on top also helps direct that airflow. So we've done a lot of, uh, of that cooling and analysis and thermal analysis to really be able to uh, have that air cooled without an actual active fan. So lastly, what's really important is interoperability. So we're partnering with all the key guys, all the CPU vendors, Intel, AMD, ARM, as well as the memory vendors to really be able to deploy the solution. So there's a lot of interoperability work that goes into these uh, platforms as well. So we take a look at a system level view. Uh, we have on the far left hand side here, you have an E-series in a simple memory expansion use case. By eight, gives you a certain level of bandwidth, so you can actually stack this rather than having a by 16, which is shown on the far right-hand side. You can connect multiple by eights, get the higher capacity, and so you kind of play with that. Do you want a lot of by eights? You can get the same equivalent bandwidth out of, more, as, out of twice as many cards, or do you go by 16 being bandwidth matched on the back end of the memory against the, uh, the CXL interface? and getting a certain level of capacity. So it's playing around with that bandwidth, latency, capacity, and cost playground. In the middle there is where we have a very differentiated solution here of memory sharing and memory pooling, where now you can connect multiple CPUs to the, main, to the same memory controller and be able to pool this dynamically so you can allocate different amount of memory to different CPUs or you can actually share the memory where you have the entire memory range assigned to all hosts. And then as Ch uh, Charles was touching on, you need some coherency at this layer depending on how that, um, how the data access is being, on, uh, is being handled. But the big advantage of memory sharing is now you're not having to copy memory all over the place, right? Everything can access that same memory range. The other is, if you take a look at this, and if it, you know, you're touching on a question about storage earlier, this is your standard HA architecture now. If reliability is a lot more important than performance, have multiple hosts that can actually be able to have redundant paths to the same memory. Right? If one CPU is having issues, certain memory is having issues, you have multiple access. So this is kind of goes towards your HA type of architectures. You can have redundancy in different types of platforms like this. So what have we been doing so far? We announced Leo back last summer, and there's been a lot of great work being done since then. We've been working in close partnership with Intel and, and AMD, with Lenovo and Supermicro. They have their existing service today that can provide by 16 dual width PCIe Gen 5 slots that can essentially easily plug in these Aurora solutions that we've been showing. And we've been demoing this and doing a lot of interoperation work in preparation for launches. Uh, you know, last time we were out publicly with this was at Supercomputing uh, just last, uh, last November there. So there's a lot of platforms that are taking advantage of CXL today. This is going to continue to grow. We're going to start seeing a lot of new form factors. But you know, in the example of the Lenovo SR650, you can expand six terabytes more memory just with more of these Leo cards. In the case of the Supermicro one, they can fit four, and so you're going to get eight terabytes of more memory on here. Depending on how Leo is used in, in different architectures, you could actually get up to 32 terabytes more memory with a lot more devices in various configurations. So again, think of it as a bit of a toolbox. The hardware is ready. How much capacity do you need? How much bandwidth do you need is really what drives that fundamental hardware backend. So I touched on this earlier of why is it so important to do interoperability. The first is when we take a look at memory today, right, even a standard CPU DDR subsystem, memory is core to server reliability. That reliability has to be there so that you can keep your service level agreements, right? Have that five nines, which really drives towards the uptime requirements for those servers. So memory is fundamental, so we have to make sure that this is reliable. The second is that Interoperability is fundamentally what drives time to market and reduce TCO, right? Having that flexibility, being able to plug in whichever memory vendor's dim that you want to plug in based on whatever is the lowest cost at that time is very important. And third is that CXL is going to continue being a growing ecosystem. You know, right now we're just starting to launch CXL 1.1, 3.0 specs already done. We're already working on the next generation we're gonna start seeing CPUs going very, very fast in this. We're gonna see devices like Leo going very fast. You need to keep up with all that interoperability work. So this is fundamentally why we do it. And ultimately what it helps is to unlock all those memory innovations 
that Charles was walking through of expansion, pooling, and sharing use cases, accelerating this time to market. This year is going to be fundamentally the year that moves forward in launching these solutions, and then reducing those development test costs for the actual uh, end customer share. With that, what we do is we actually do all this testing and permutations of work, and we just ship out reports for all of our customers. They can be able to download these reports and be able to deploy with confidence knowing that those permutations that they're using have already been tested. So putting this all together, um, I think the kind of the three key statements I started with is like CXL is here, right? We're ready to deploy these solutions. It's a bit of a toolbox, so you can you know, expand up to two terabytes of memory per controller. How do you want to use that? Right? What type of DIMMs, what type of bandwidth capacity you're looking for? We can actually reduce the TCO. We can actually optimize on performance, increase performance in a lot of cases, depending on what those application-specific workloads are. And then finally, really deploying with confidence by being able to seamlessly interoperate with the CPU and memory vendors, but also having some of those really required features of reliability, availability, serviceability, and security capabilities that's required within the silicon to be able to deploy those solutions. So if you've got a system that's hardware compatible for CXL and the memory expansion, what has to be done at the software layer to be able to take advantage of it? Do you can your existing application just natively use expanded memory or do you have to refactor it? Yeah, good question. So uh, I would say ultimately it depends on the application. There's gonna be certain applications that are not latency sensitive at all. Right? And then those can just easily be able to adopt CXL without any challenges. Right? If we take a look at an example, it would be an in-memory database application. Right? Bandwidth is important, capacity is important, but less latency sensitive. Today, we're already actually been showing that with Leo, we can actually deliver the same performance as local memory, not even remote memory, with this, and, then, and we can actually perform the same. Uh, and so what the application sees is a NUMA node. Now, the way it looks, I mean, in the example of Linux, it shows up as a coreless NUMA node. And so you can essentially pin that and be able to hit the ground running. If there's an application that is latency sensitive, then it may want to be able to identify, well, how much of that application should use local memory, which application should use remote memory. But today's applications as they stand are all comprehend the idea of local and remote memory, whether it's like a single NUMA hop away. And a device like Leo is within that range of being within a NUMA hop. So almost all applications should just be able to deploy without any changes and taking advantage of that, of CXL attached memory. Okay. Interesting what you said there, uh, and I'm not a developer, but would it be able at the, pro, at the application level to decide, no, keep this local or put this into, into so, so I, I don't know what the reasoning would be, but for instance, um, perhaps security, if they haven't, gotten the security up to par, say so this is a super sensitive application, we want this only on you know memory, which is not going to be on this, especially CX, CXL3 when it's yeah. prepared, I don't know. Yeah, so I would say, really good question, and hold it, because I think Steve's going to have some oh. exciting <laughs> things to talk about there. <laughs> uh, so you can have it, I'll give you a simple answer, you can have it where it's uh, like understanding what my tiers are, um, and the application can just kind of manage that, at, but you kind of a little bit more work to be done there. Kind of thing, right? yeah. yeah. Or you can say, you know what? I know these applications don't care, so I'm just they can use whatever memory is available, look at it as a single NUMA node. Or you can have solutions like what Memberage is delivering, which is to actually manage it for you so you don't need to do anything. Right. And so there's it's pretty impressive some of the work that they're doing to make that agnostic and it just looks like memory. But brings you a lot of performance benefits. Are these custom silicon? Yes, yeah, so this full, full custom silicon developed by Astero Labs. Okay.